much. Welcome Thank to the studio, much. Mr. Yusuf. Thank you for having me. Well, I believe you've been following the conversation with uh, the uh, psychologist, consultant yes, psychologist in Lagos. Yes, of course. And uh, it's quite unfortunate the stereotype that people give to uh, the topic of mental health in Nigeria. Like she pointed out, it's always a hush hush topic. Don't say you have mental health because people will think you are mad. Yes, exactly. How would you react to this? Okay, so. Um, the problem is that we've not digested the fact that mental health is just basically like our physical health. Yes. It's the same way you have malaria, and uh, that's the same way you can have anxiety, that's the same way you can have depression. Like in every three individuals you meet around, like every two has mental illness. Like we all go through challenges, we all go through um, one difficulties or the others. So this this um, topic of mental health topic is something we should not be shy away from. It's something we should be able to take the message down to the grassroots. It's something we should be able to digest, and the stigma is going to reduce if we are able to do that. So and let's just keep this topic moving and um, let's keep, keep it a keep it normal. With like people. Yes, exactly. We're, we're talking about uh, people in the grassroots. Recently, yesterday. Um, there was a flood in uh, Maiduguri, the Borno State Capital. Now, of course, Maiduguri is an urban city, but there are pockets of communities surrounding Maiduguri oh, where this uh, flooding have also extended to, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very, very devastating. When we talk about mental health, issues like this can actually trigger anxiety, can trigger uh, trauma. issues of ha trauma, high blood pressure, uh, depression, and the rest. Okay. And most people might not really even know what's wrong with them. They just okay. find themselves be feeling very afraid or their hearts palpitating very okay. fast how do we raise awareness in such rural areas where people might not really know what is wrong with them but it is a mental health issue so thank you for this question so basically yesterday i was having a conversation with my friend on how to take mental health to the grassroots so first of all we need to be able to translate this mental health into every local dialect like hausa Igbo. Yoruba, so that these people in this grassroots level are going to be able to understand what you are even trying to tell them. For example, you're talking about the flood that happened in Medugori. The traumatic effect of this flood can cause a, a very big, big gap in, in, in the grassroots level. Yes. Like these people don't even know that this is what they are going through trauma. They can, and if you can identify what you are going through, at the grassroots level that I'm going through trauma, when you have already translated mental health to them in the language they understand, they understand that, ah, I'm going through trauma, I can easily seek for help because of because we are going through flaws, we are going through all these difficulties, but they don't even, they don't understand your language. Yes. You are all professionals, you are all psychologists, you are all professors, you are all doctors. The terminology yeah, the are terminology, not terminology to that to them, But understand. it's something that if you tell them in their local dialect, they understand it easily. So we need to be able to translate, we need to be able to translate it down to the grass level root so that these people can digest mental health and they are, they are able to, to understand what to do and they are able to face their difficulties. Like secondly, I wanted to talk about the protest, that the, the last protest that just went back. Yes. There, there, there are a lot of traumatic experience that went through people, like in Kano State, because due to this protest. Yes. But these people don't, like people are, Fatigue, even fatigue is a is a is a is a is a, is a, is a, a, form, a, is a form of trauma. Yes. So people are tired because of this protest. So now after the protest, what next do we do? They just carry on. With they just carry lives. on with the normal life. But in a, in a, in a, in a well um, well developed country, in a well organized country, after this whole issue, there are there are hotlines like that you can just easily call. Yeah, I'm going through this trauma. How and what should I do? Your professional psychologist is going to tell you what to do. But, but, but how, how accessible are these hotlines in? Uh, let's focus now on rural communities okay. where, where people might not even have the means to purchase mobile phones. Okay. Not to talk of having the in-depth information as to who to call okay. when they are having mental health okay. uh, uh, issues relating to the current economic hardship bedeviling the country okay so that is where the government has to come in again so you need to set out policies that are going to help these people in rural areas for example you can use your primary health care centers your primary health care centers can have their mental health departments where you can just easily go 
every local government, every ward has a primary health care center. So after the, um, the, the mental health bill that is passed, try and find policies that are going to set out these departments in rural and um, primary health care centers yeah. where someone can easily just move access to like there are, there are different mental health um, hotlines in Nigeria but we don't even know about them like the NDLA has their own yes. so all these call and they are free oh, language they, they, the NDLA yes, has a hotline they, they, they do well, well well I I believe the issue of sensitization now is um, the impediment between these agencies that have been set up to help mm -hmm. and the people who need the help. the help. How do we cover and close up this gap? Okay, so um, awareness is very, very important. But first of all, if we don't fight stigma, awareness cannot be created. Because if people still feel shy away from mental health, you can't even bring this awareness to them. So we need to set out policies again by the government that are going to create jingles, local language jingles, create awareness in these rural areas, go organize programs. There's already a policy. There should be a budget that is covering all these things. Spend money on mental health because if you don't spend money on mental health, that is when you find a lot of crimes, a lot of substance use disorder, a lot of substance abuse, yes, yeah. a lot of a lot of criminal activities, a lot of depression. Of recent I was hearing someone was on a pole trying to commit suicide because of fuel prices. So you need to you need to you need to create awareness to this for these people in this rural community to be able to but first of all fight the stigma. Second thing translate mental health in their local dialect and you can easily pass this message I, to them. I, I mean my degree in particular because I'm 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 particularly concerned due to the current hardship they are facing uh, because of the allowed dam uh, collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, these people have been grappling with the Boko Haram insurgency since 2009. That's more than a decade now. And uh, the, the issue of food crisis in the state has also been there. We've also seen them uh, grappling with, with poverty and the rest. And now, of recent, the flooding. All of these things can actually have a, a very negative toll on the mental health of individuals of in that particular of section of the country. Now, my question is, in terms of awareness, in terms of uh, uh, stigmatizing the issue of mental health in, in uh, communities like this, how do we create an enabling environment, especially for people who might know what is wrong with them, but don't have access or the financial substance to be able to access clinical psychologists to help them? How do we help them? So we need to work more on these uh, call, call lines because statistically, numbers of psychologists to the populations in Nigeria, yes. like every psychology, every one psychology is supposed to see over 10 to 20 patients, which is not realistic. So we need to, we need to be able to take psychology to them, like yes. through their local, like train local peer peer consultants yes training we're supposed to provide trainings in um, lo rural areas like that to local people people who can provide first first aid service mental health service yes then our referral pathway should be on a on a very concentrated path we should we should we should know how to refer people from your local area there should be there should be a policy set on ground that is going to help people to refer you from your local area down to the professional. If your if your peer uh, counselors are provide first aid services for you in your local areas, uh, that's this after training a peer counselor because there has to be a project, there has to be a program taken to these people in this rural area. Train people, train teachers in school, guardian and counseling teachers in school. You need you need to train them on this mental health, behavioral, uh, emotional intelligence, yes. emotional emotional uh, observation, how to deal with emotions. Like, for example, children in primary schools in rural area, probably, probably they, are, they come to school late and all with a dirty uniform. You see that some teachers will just start flogging them. That is not, not the first thing. Not necessarily yeah. finding out what exactly what is happening. Do that. And probably that child is from an abusive home. Probably the night before that day, the both parents were fighting. 
probably or, or, or the, the child flood, was beaten. Yeah, probably the flood affected the child before that day. And he's going to go to the school the next day with the dirty uniform or come to school around 9 a.m. And you, the next thing the teacher is doing is to flog him. So those teachers need trainings. Yes. They need to be trained. They need to know how to refer a serious case to a professional. So more needs to be done by the government. Now, now there is a report that currently there are only about 319 licensed clinical psychologists that are registered with the Nigerian Association of Clinical Psychologists in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it also estimates that there could be about 400 to 500 clinical psychologists in the country generally, but just about 319 registered. are licensed and registered. We are a country of over 200 mm -hmm. million people. Yes. This is a very minute number a dent in the larger picture of course. of course how do we bridge this up and how do we encourage more people to come into the system in order to help so this this has to start from our educational system we need to encourage more of people to to study psychology we need to still take away that stigma related to mental health we need to from from secondary school from primary school just just like the way they do the career week look make make people interested in mental health make mental health a very in interesting conversation to to cycle around don't make people shy away from it encourage people to go into this profession yeah and you have more numbers of psychologists but currently now the numbers are poor the very numbers poor. are poor the government the government and the ministry of education needs to do more from the educational background from the grassroots level, from the primary school level, from the secondary school level, and I encourage more people to study. Uh, earlier, earlier, you mentioned a, sh a shortage of um, clinical psychologists in primary health care centers in rural communities. But, but I think the major issue we'll be, we should be looking at uh, is, in fact, how much of medical personnel do we even have in, in, this, uh, uh, in this primary health care centers. Uh, centers? Not to talk of more sophisticated uh, sections of health like mental health mental health so um primary health care centers are they're they are facing uh, bottlenecks yes a lot of bottlenecks like from um corruptions eco economic corruption like um, people are not spending the adequate money they're supposed to spend in primary health care centers yes. some primary health care centers does not ha they don't have anybody in it, working in it. Yes. So um, policies, like power needs to be given to the local government mm -hmm. to be able to oversee this, this um, department, your primary health care center. They should be able to follow up and they should be able to monitor and make sure their appropriate staffs, number of staffs. Yes. Like they sh the government needs to just do a lot about all these things. Like they, sh they should follow up, not only setting up policies, but make sure that they follow up with these policies and make sure their people are exhibiting these policies and we need to we need to we as individuals need to also help the government because you we can't allow the government to do everything like if you're a professional consultant if you're a professional guiding and counseling person you can also support and volunteer to these primary health care centers just provide first aid to people in your rural communities and you'll be able to refer them to probably the hotlines and the professionals in this now, now Yusuf, you are a program and program assistant and project manager at reconnect health development initiatives yes, uh, tell us a little bit more about what you and your organization do in order to help people uh, in, in terms of health related issues okay thank you so reconnect health development initiative is a non-governmental organization that we we started 2013 and we provide psychosocial support, treatment, and we involve in policy makings, do programs, and um, provide support, subsidize support yes. to for on mental health issues. So we have various programs, like we have a program called the STRP. It's called the Subsidized Treatment Rehabilitation Program, where we subsidize because mental health is actually expensive. Yes. So people are not able to afford mental health services. So this program help in subsidizing treatment. So you can just contact them and they'll subsidize treatment very well, both in-house and outpatient. Yes. And we have a school program called the Apply, about people like you, where we go to train teachers. Yeah in government schools, 
private schools and train them on same emotional intelligence and first aid treatment for mental health and we partner with other NGOs um, to provide programs in mental health like last like last upper month we're in Lagos to provide mental health care to people who that live in with HIV AIDS. Yes. So people living with HIV and AIDS, they're able to receive treatment, they're able to um, live among people in the community with HIV, but they are still going through this stigma and everything. So, yes, yes. stigma. So we try to encourage them and let them know that mental health is very important and they need to be able to bounce back into this community. So Reconnect has a lot of programs in various angles helping people. We have this um, program called Don't Judge a Book by its cover series yeah. where we just hang out and have conversation on uh, your story, like previous problem like and, you just and, share and your what 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 regions are you focusing on with these programs are, are we looking at the urban cities or or are, do you go to the rural communities okay, so and uh, you know okay we, we work in yeah. rural communities we've worked in Meduguri, we've worked in kb we've worked in sokoto we've worked in kaduna we've worked in joss we've worked in lagos and uh, acquire we, we we focus more on the rural and urban both together we we just walk anywhere. You know, earlier yeah. I was I was having when I was having a conversation with Angel, um, you know, virtually, I asked her something about uh, the usage of drugs, drugs abuse uh, being attributed to cases of mental health issue and even cases of uh, psychosis, which uh, I believe you're very familiar with. Yes. Uh, how, how do we sensitize people to let them know that, uh, hey, look, this uh, ecstasy you are getting for a short while mm -hmm. could have daring consequences in the future so um we need to make these people most people go into substance use because of probably depression or um, anxiety P people just want to run away from reality yes. that is why they go into substance use so you need to explain to these people that after using this substance when the substance is gone the next day don't you still face your fear you still face your fear and the effect of this substance we all know damages to the lungs damages to the uh, brain like loss of memory yes. so you need to you need to create awareness from the same grassroots level certainly from the same grassroots level to let them know the effect of substance use and to let them know that substance use cannot take away your pain or your sorrow or your yes. troubles no matter what you do, substance is just prolonging everything. It's not. It's not the. It's not the. It's not the case. It's not what to do when you're in such situations. Now, now, now in in closing, in just a few seconds, what mm -hmm. would be your uh, words of advice to one, the federal government, the Ministry of Health, as well as other uh, um, agencies or non-governmental agencies who are stakeholders in the uh, awareness for mental health in the country? and ensuring that uh, stability of mind returns to most Nigerians. Okay, so first of all, I've, I'm first going to thank the effort that the federal government have, have been doing so far, yes. by especially by even passing the bill, the mental health bill is, is a very great plus. But we need to, health is wealth, we need to do more. Um, stakeholders need to come together yes. and set out policies that are going to help people. Yes. Government need to uh, set aside budget to for on mental health issues in rural areas make sure these budgets are not bottlenecked by anybody follow due process because mental corruption in mental health is going to be worst we're just going to groom group group of um m mental ill people in the community which is going to increase crime so we need to leave corruption out of mental health and do the needful and do the needful all, all right thank yes, you sir. so much uh, mr yusuf thank you for coming much. on the program thank you uh, this much. has been a very informative engagement with you thank you very much sir.